This meeting is called to order. We're going to stand uh, to salute the flag. And a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Is Mr. Diorio with us? Yes. Okay, great. Um, Mr. Butler, can we have a roll call vote, please? Uh, yes, you may, Madam President. Uh, Ms. Perry. Present. Ms. Monroe um, uh, Witset. Present. Ms. Peter Coey, excused. Ms. Woodfolk. Present. Mrs. Washington. Present. Mr. Fowler, excused. Ms. Harris Johnson. Present. Ms. Crawley. Present. And Mrs. Abney. Present. Uh, Dr. Winder. Present. Mr. DiOrio. Oh, you know what? He's. he's I'm on. sorry. He, he, the mic's not on, on the laptop. Oh. He, can, he probably can hear now. We want to make sure he can hear. He can hear now. Does he need the mic on the computer? He said he can hear, Ms. Witzer? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Uh, Mr. Diorio, you're present. Yes, I am. And Mr. Butler, present. Can we turn his volume up to I make sure? Thank you so much. Um, I just want to uh, welcome everybody to this meeting. Um, I want to thank you all for being with us. Um, and we have some concerns and we want to give you all the opportunity to share um, before we approve the um, before we have a motion to approve the agenda um, I just wanted to share that we're going to work collaboratively and respectfully to solve the problems of the district we um, appreciate parents and teachers involvement and support with um, educating our students. And we ask that um, if you choose to come to the mic, you will have a, t a three minute time to speak. And we just wanna make sure that we're working collaboratively and respectfully because we all have the best interest of the students and our community at heart. Um, again, we welcome your comments, your participation, uh, we believe we are a team. This is a collaborative effort. We're working together to solve the problems um, of our district. Thank you. Um, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion. motion. Second. Uh, any opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Uh, we have some new business. Under agenda item one, discussion regarding additional staff at Academy Park High School. Um, the district administration have proposed to the board that we um, hire two assistant principals. Um, the cost is $319,822 up to $361,168 um, to help with discipline. Um, and ensure that um, it's handled in a timely manner uh, to help with increasing administration presence in the hallways, increase administration presence in the cafeteria, um, and increase 
uh, classroom presence in the school itself. Um, though that will be on our Thursday agenda for the 15th of December. The district is also still under a RFP process uh, with safe corridors as well as a couple of other companies looking at some hallway monitor monitoring. That process is complete on December 19th and at that time we will know um, what the results of that will be. And also, um, we are still, we have still been interviewing for security. We have a, the new position that was created by the board um, that was needs to be filled and then a half a position. Um, and so we are still um, interviewing for that. Um, last time when we wasn't able to find anyone, we did uh, go with a company to fill in the gap. Um, then discussion number two regarding additional security equipment at Academy Park High School and the Knight Academy. The district is looking to purchase two Evolve systems, an additional one for APHS that, and then one for the alternative program. Um, the additional one for APHS will then go back down to um, the bottom floor since both have been moved up to the top floor, main floor. Also, it will require two additional scholarships kiosks to ensure that we can check our students in with their um, student ID. We also want to increase our expectation for students to carry their ID and use their ID throughout the building. Also, uh, we heard a couple months ago about uh, 15 cameras out of the 80 cameras, 15 were down. Um, those 15 were down because they were antiquated and we had bought um, all these new cameras, new equipment, so they were not um, working appropriately. Uh, the, we have ordered 15 more cameras. They have arrived, and the transition starts tomorrow to have those implemented in. Um, we know we had a question about our door alarms, and it was discovered that one of the receivers were um, not working appropriately. That has uh, been resolved. That issue has been resolved. Um, and everything is up and working with that. And that was it. That's all. Okay, thank you. Um, we're going to move into public comment. First up, Jennifer Clement. Okay, great. Um, my name is Jennifer Clement, um, 839 Bellevue Drive here in Falcroft. Um, I jotted a few things down, um, so I wouldn't forget a few things that I need to say. I bought my home 12 years ago. My oldest has been in this. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
My oldest has been in the district since he was in kindergarten. Now he's in 10th grade. I also have a son in third grade in Delcroft. I just want to say that the, um, the best aspect of this district are most of the teachers. I said most, not all. I have observed through the years um, the deterioration of the district, and I blame every single one of you. <coughs> none, none of you deserve those seats. Or positions. If it was up to me and many parents, all of you will be fired and replaced. The community has observed the childish, unprofessional behavior most of you have. I've seen it many times, and it's embarrassing. I pay my school tax and my mortgage. My son and the kids that live around here deserve better. Because of the lack of ingenuity, now the district has to pay for my son's tutor, the math and science tutor. Um, for my 10th grader. You say that there are no teachers. How about recruiting out of state? That has happened many times. Many states have gone to, um, I have knowledge of Puerto Rico, recruit teachers. Um, I really don't know how you sleep at night. I also work for a school. I work with kids. And every day I ask myself, did I do everything I could for my student? I put myself in the place of those parents. And I want those kids to be treated as my son's coach, teacher, mentor, et cetera. And how I would like my son to be treated. That's all, thank you. Thank you. Francesca Barley. Hi, everybody. Francesca Barley, 418 Lafayette Ave, Collingdale. Um, as you guys know, I'm here all of the time. You see me all of the time. I don't like to bring up things that were mentioned in the past, but we were, you talked about the security guards. I believe administration asked you for four extra security guards, not one and a half. Um, also, I was here two or three months ago and asked you about extra administrators for the high school. I believe my words were, they are drowning. Now, because of all of this, now we're gonna start to finally listen. I don't know what it's gonna take. Is it gonna take a dead student on your school property? for you guys to actually put something in motion. Miss Monroe, I wanted to wear a shirt that said, let's have a meeting to have another meeting to have another meeting because I keep coming to all these meetings and we do nothing. There's no urgency in hiring. We've been saying every time I get up here, we're hiring, we're hiring, we're hiring. There's nobody in the buildings, nobody. And we can't get anybody because we get this press and nobody wants to work for us when we have excellent, such great kids. We have great kids that deserve everything in the world that everybody else in this county gets. And we're just not getting it. So I'm asking you today for urgency. I don't want to hear that you're hiring. I don't want to hear that you're interviewing. I want to see somebody in the building Monday. It doesn't take that long. You can get a child abuse clearance in a week, OK? I will be here on Thursday. Just so you know, I'll be speaking again. Thank you. Diane Rattlewinook. Rattlewinook. Diane Rattlewinook. I teach at Academy Park High School. I've been here 17 years. Um, I'm addressing you today because you are the only people in this room that have the power to do what is right for our students. It is unsafe. 
bottom line, our buildings are unsafe. I can tell you I have lost people in my personal life to mental health, drug addiction, suicide. It is something you will never, ever forgive yourself for. And if that's what you want on your conscience, then continue to not take action. We have and sh we need to have a zero policy of tolerance of violence, period. There is 1,354 students in our building. If we give every one of them one chance to fight, that's 7.5 fights a day in the high school. You want your child sitting in a school that has 7.5 fights a day? Give them two. Guess what? That's 15 fights a day. It's unsafe and a disruption to our education, to our students who deserve it. They are fabulous kids in that building who are overlooked every single day for shenanigans. We have a cyber program. Put them there. They don't want to be in our building? Get them out. It's that easy. It's viable. It's doable. And we lose our kids in this district to cyber programs frequently because people don't want to send their schools, kids to school where it's not safe. All to add, 10 years I taught there, 10 years. My best friend sat in a classroom, across the classroom with somebody with a bullet, nine bullets and a gun, arrested on the spot. And you know what? Did he walk, did that person, he or she, walk through a metal detector? No. Were they wanted? No. Is there an SRO officer there? No. You can't dump the conflicts into the Alt-Ed department. All that does is complete, just make it more chaos. You have to divide them, get them out of the school. You don't want to be here. You don't care about learning. You want to fight? Then go home. Go home and get your education in front of a computer like other children do. Safety is a must. And if a tragedy occurs in this district, on our time, including mine and yours, I promise you, we will never forgive ourselves and we will never forget it. And that's the truth. Do something, please, I beg you. Jerry Kirchhoff. Hello. Hello. My name is Sherry Kirchhoff. Um, I have a child that is in eighth grade that will be going to Academy Park next year. My biggest concern is the safety. Everyone's talking about how bad it is there. He's afraid to go to Academy Park High School. He recently played um, football for Darby Township Eagles and one of the coaches for um, your high school football team. They want him to come and play there, but he can. At this point, I don't feel safe to send him to that school. He doesn't feel safe to go to the school. And now I need to look elsewhere because we have meetings after meetings after meetings and you still haven't done anything to help the kids in our district. There are a lot of kids in our district that are awesome. I've been involved in many programs. I volunteer my time whenever I can, and it's still the same thing. It's like we need to help our students. We need to make them feel safe. Like everyone's saying, what are we gonna do? Wait until someone gets seriously injured and then it's all on us? It's, it's just ridiculous. So please, please do something about the security. I mean, you talked about it in October. We need four new security guards, and what's one and a half? That's just a half? Why would you one and a half? It doesn't make any sense. Like, I, I get it. I guess that's a part-time person, the half. But they asked for four. Like, they need four. They don't need one and a half. 
So please, please do something and do it with urgency and do it soon so that our kids can feel safe. And then maybe I won't have to send my son to a Catholic high school. Thank you. Courtney Rowan. Good evening, Courtney Rowan, 803 Park Drive in Glen Olden. Well, here we are, third special board meeting in as many months, impressive, not in a good way. Since the first meeting where there was clear passion and a sense of immediacy, there has been no action. And if there has been any action, it's been too minimal to impact anything. Fights continue, weapons in the school continue, strangers entering the building continue, and another lockdown has resulted in generally more chaos. Side note, that lockdown and fight last week that required an apparent ambulance was only brought to my attention through my children. There has been no communication, but I digress. The last two meetings, there were several ideas presented and discussed. Have we moved forward with any of them or made arrangements to pursue? Glad to hear we've done something. Gotten quotes, statements of work, potential planning. There was definitely a sense of action and what seemed like a clear desire to implement from both the community, the board, and the administration. But have you actually done anything? Where is the strategic plan to manage all of this that everyone was so aligned on? What are the action steps? Is it going to take more escalated violence to actually have action occur? Or maybe kids get in contact high while they're trying to use the bathroom isn't enough. Look, we're talking real danger. Constant fighting, weapons, drugs, constant news reports of how bad the district is and yet no change. I have been out here defending these kids and this school all over because of the lack of progress on your part. Your inaction continues to spur the conversation of what an awful school and bunch of kids must go and that is simply not the case. All talk and no action. If bad branding was your intent, well you've nailed it. No wonder we can't hire what we need. Security is lacking, hire them. Teachers are lacking, hire them. Additional resources are lacking, hire them. And furthermore, how dare the words pay increase or bonus even cross anybody's lips for anyone involved in running this district right now. No one should be awarded. No one should be awarded for the non-action that has been implemented. You are here to work for us and our community, so do your jobs or remove yourself. Let us find folks that want to do the work I am sick of hearing the same story with the same inaction. As a parent with three students in this district, I want them to have pride and have a sense of excitement each morning. But right now, I make sure I say I love them every morning in case I don't see them again. Because as disturbing as that is, it crosses my mind every damn day. So you know what? Let's have a few more meetings about it though. Thanks. Bashir Allen. Yeah, good evening. Uh, my name is Bashir Allen. I live on 939 Elmwood Avenue. Um, I've been a parent in the district for 20 years. I have three children that were educated through the district. Um, I, do, I did come to the meetings, not recently, but I'm, I'm a little confused because it seems like, like everybody just come up, say what they say, go sit down. There's no interaction. So I'm going to ask questions. I don't know if this is the forum for my questions to be answered. But if it's not, I would like to know when that forum is. And if it is, I would appreciate an answer. So the question that I have is, what is the staffing level at the schools in the district supposed to be at? for faculty, security, custodial, and lunchroom. What is it at now? What is the plan to get it there? And what are the things that's keeping us from being there? So that's my first question. So is this the forum to answer that? Or is that another forum or? So um, we will not answer the question, but um, please, we appreciate you asking them. So this is the time for you to ask the questions and um, the superintendent will respond, okay? 
Okay. Um, not tonight, though. Okay. All right. She will follow up with you via email okay. or a, a different way of communication. All right. That's not my only question, though, okay. right? Okay. I'm still on the clock, right? Okay. All right. So my second question is the issues that are known issues in regards to the behavioral issues of some of the children, right? Yes, sir. Like, who's responsible for putting in place what needs to be there to correct it? Because if you have an issue and you have a person or a group responsible for correcting it, then that's where the responsibility lies. So we're not here having meeting after meeting after meeting, talking to y'all like y'all the answer, which is, to me is obvious that y'all not because they're not answering. Not in a disrespectful manner, but meaning that who is? So, so let's get them in front of us so we can find out what's happening. If it's a money issue, what's the plan? If it's not a money issue, then what's the plan? Every kid that's in the school is not equipped to be educated in that kind of environment for all kinds of different reasons. Not just because they bad, but why are they acting the way they acting? What's, what's missing? Because we can't lump them in and say, all the kids is fighting, just kick them out. Because then they're just going to fight somewhere else. They're still our problem. My oldest daughter graduates this year. And she's in cyber school because I don't feel comfortable with the ability for her to be in a safe environment. And, and I know how I would respond to something happening to one of my children. You feel me? So to avoid that, I sent her away. But because I still live in the neighborhood, and these are the children from the neighborhood, that's why I still come back. So I'm always going to be vested. So, so that's, that's my second question. My third question is, is there, a, is there a committee or a group of people where we're at in the school, whether it's the principals, whether it's the school board, that's responsible for community engagement? Meaning, who are the people in Collingdale, Fallcroft, Sharon Hill, Darby Township that can put together situations to make it where they can help, not necessarily safe corridors, not to knock them, but if they're not from the community, you got to kind of question the lube. Like, I always will respect someone's um, intention to help, but the kids walk through my block. You understand what I'm saying? So how do we know which, what's needed? That, that's really my question is, like, have the issues that, that, the, that the principals are being faced with and the teachers are being faced with, does the community know about it? Because this is not, this is a representation of some of the community, but we're talking four boroughs, five boroughs. So, so that's my question is, if it's not one in place, can we get one in place? Because I'm sure that amongst the people in the neighborhoods, we could come up with some ideas because if a kid is out of order and he doesn't respect anybody that's trying to get him in order, then you only have one option and that's the police. And that's not going to work out good for our kids. That's a whole other issue, but I'm just saying. Absolutely. So, so respectfully, I just would like to have my questions answered. I don't know if between now and Thursday is enough time. Do we have your name All and my your information email? Is right. Okay. I'm, they know me. We will absolutely follow yeah, up yeah, with I you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dawn Ellis. Dawn Ellis, 629 Green Hill Road, Sharon Hill. So the last time I was here, we were talking about hoodies, and that was overturned, and blah, blah, blah. And I stood up in front of you and said that I don't have a child in the district and I would never bring her back. But guess what I did? I brought my child back into the district because how could I stand here and represent my neighborhood and not have a child going through the same thing that the other child children are going through in the district? So I stand here as now a parent of a child in Southeast Delco, Delco School District. So my question today, I'm not going to stand here and complain, but to the superintendent, my email address is dklellis at gmail.com. I would like you to let me know why you want $10,000 up front. 
why you want a 3.5 increase every year, why you want a five-year contract, why do you deserve it, why you need $500 a month for gas. Let me know. I'm curious. Excuse me. Before we call the next person to the mic, I just want to be clear, we're not going to address um, the superintendent about her contract. It's inappropriate because the superintendent has not um, requested or proposed a contract, nor has it been voted on by the board. So we will not be discussing that at all. Thank you very much. Not tonight. Thank you so much. Maria Jenkins. Good evening. Maria Jenkins, 1095 Glen Circle, Glen Olden, Pennsylvania, 19036. Um, so I had a child go through the school, and I have one in the school. And I'm going to get a little personal and let you know the child that's in the school has an IEP. When I say failed, I'm going to say failed on all levels. Academically, safety, and, and I'm not sure how many parents in here know that since that incident the other day, y'all have had several substitutes, again, because the teachers feel unsafe and don't want to come in. So there's a lot of unsaid and unknown to the parents that y'all getting away with a lot. Again, communication. At what point are you going to say, my pockets is not the issue. These children's safety is the issue. What is it going to take to send these kids back home until y'all get at this point, two and a half more security guards because they already asked for four and you don't have that. What is the plan? Why can't these children, uh, I mean, half of us, we may not have it and we may not be able to do it, but we're going to make sure our kids are safe at home getting their education. So at what point are you going to say, we can't do it as a school board, as a principal, as what y'all call security? which the children have no respect for because they, they, they play with them in the hallway, but then you want to tell them to go get in line or fall in suit. Are you serious right now? Are you joking with me? What, what line are we on? So again, and I was here at the last meeting about the hoodies. Again, my child came home and didn't say anything about a hoodie, jumped up, taught him, didn't teach him or anything. And, and, and when you were in the school and you saw these things that you really saw a hoodie that made this thing, like you didn't see security playing with kids, you didn't see the kids out of place, it's so more things that I need y'all to go into the school and see. Because what y'all see is parents. Y'all don't see what our children go through on a day-to-day basis. We see y'all sit behind these mics. We see y'all roll your eyes, suck your teeth, suck in your necks. Talk back and forth, roll your eyes. We see all that. But what I don't see is y'all standing representing for not one of our children in this district. Walk in them doors they walk through. Do that. And don't go straight to the office. Walk through the hallways. Go in the bathroom and get contact like they do. Go in the bathroom and step over pads. Open condom wrappers. Oh, we can talk about it. Walk through the stairways that's not clean. Walk through that same door that them kids let the people in to harm another student on your watch when we told y'all it was several doors unmanned. Several doors unmanned. 
How are these people getting in if they're not coming through the front? They coming through the sides that we told y'all that was open that y'all would know if y'all visited the school. So again, please, y'all sitting, you, you have this, and with the utmost respect, you sitting with the serious faces. I need y'all to accept responsibility, get into these schools, smell and see what our kids see. Because y'all been educated. Y'all fell in our children. I expect more, and I'm going to continue to show up and ask for more on the strength of not only my child, but every other child in this community who parent can't come in and speak for them. Again, I'm going to be here for them. Thank you. Michelle McGowan, 421 Clifton Avenue, Sharon Hill. I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting a little sick of the media coming up here, checking us at our worst. We do amazing things in this district. They don't know. You know what they know? The negativity that is always out there because you guys haven't gotten it together yet. The third emergency meeting? Third? Are you serious? That, that, we are now beyond critical. There is no reason in the world that there are not administrators who work here in ESC that are now working at Academy Park. You have laptops, you have cell phones, you have cars. Some of you guys are getting some gas stipends. Drive on over to AP. That's where your new office should be located. Not because I don't think that you guys work hard, but I think that you are not getting it. You are not understanding severity. I should never once call over to this building and find any of you here. You should be at AP. We don't have enough teachers. You guys have degrees. We don't have enough security. Y'all are grown. There's no reason for this. We have issues all over the place. People are talking about the bathrooms are nasty. Work in there for a couple weeks. And I mean exclusively. And use those bathrooms. Don't use the staff bathroom. Use their bathrooms. And at lunchtime, oh, no, no, do not order. Go down to that cafeteria and eat that food. See how that works for you. When you are sitting there, and you guys are getting your messages and your emails done, do it right there in the middle of that cafeteria so that there is another body there to be able to help our overworked staff. Because at this point, you are facing a fatality. It is not a matter of if, it is a matter of when at this point. And when that happens, there's gonna be more media right here, standing next to us, demanding some answers, because you guys have had since October to get this under control. You guys got that uh, safe corridors information at that October meeting, I was right there. You are telling me you can't make a decision until December 19th? I don't think so. You guys have had that information and sat on it, and it is unacceptable, and you are now running risks of killing kids. My son is autistic, he is small, he is in eighth grade. I am terrified to send him here. He will be killed. And I, if that happens, God help every last one of you. So, no more meetings. And I absolutely was offended by the response that that gentleman asked for some very upfront information and was told that the superintendent will follow up with him. Absolutely not. She will follow up with every last one of us. We all want that information. It is not something that only one person should know. You should have those numbers right there. That's it. Latanya Manson.
Is there, are there any other cards that we didn't? Do you put the one? Antoinette? You do? Okay. Is, is it Antoinette? Antoinette. Okay, I one more. Antoinette? My name is Antoinette Oliver, 224 Roberta Avenue, Collindale. I had two children graduate from Southeast Delco. It was totally different 15 years ago. Um, what I really want to say is, do y'all hire principals that really care about our kids' education? Do y'all hire them that, that we want them to go to college? We want a better future for them. We don't want to see them doing negativity, fighting every day, all day. We don't have block parties out here. We don't have no activities, real activities for our kids. All we have is we got to pay for something that we don't want. Why? I mean, my cousin basically said everything I needed to say. Also, safety is the main goal. Um, I actually went to school on Friday when they had a fight in the bathroom. The police officers was look, looking around, just having a conversation like, hey, what's going on? Kids walking everywhere, doing whatever. But I also want to speak from a parent point of view. All these parents right here, y'all all care about your, your kids. But we got to be mindful of the parents that don't care about their kids at all. So if it take a village to raise them, we got to stick together. Not just coming to this one meeting or this second meeting or this third meeting. It takes all of us. We got to come to all of them. So let's get some of them parents out there that really don't pay attention to their kids. Let's get them to come. Let's speak on or let them speak on what the consequences they should get when their kids is being destructive, being rude, disrespecting, bringing guns to school. That's what we need to speak on. That's it. Thank you. Um, we're going to move into the announcement of future meetings. I'm sorry. Do you have a card? Okay. Okay. I thought you were finished with that. Are there more? No, I don't think so. Hold on. Count them. Okay. Jess Prizendorfer. Hi, I'm Jesse Preisendorfer. I teach at Academy Park. I've been there for 13 years. Um, uh, the first thing I'd like to say is, can we move Thursday's meeting to the auditorium at the high school? Because I think a lot more people are going to be here on Thursday. I make a motion that we move the board business mo meeting to Academy Park High School for Thursday. Second. Is everybody in favor of that? There's a motion on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Motion carries. What else do we want? <laughs> um, so uh, the issues at AP are, are going to spread to all the schools because it's coming out of the community. So in addition to security officers and weapon detectors, which are Band-Aids on the main problem, we also need, and this is going to be me forever until we get this, we need school psychologists, we need social workers, we need way more guidance counselors than we have. If we're going to shove kids into alternative, there are zero guidance counselors there until March. So that's not helpful at all. Um, we need a career and, and college counselor at the high school because what, otherwise it's left to the teachers to advise our kids and our guidance counselors are busy doing all the other stuff. Three guidance counselors for 1,354 kids is not enough guidance counselors at the high school. Um, we need uh, the, the, social, uh, the so, social emotional learning training that we were provided gave us one day's worth. And it's responsive and restorative practices, which is great for interpersonal stuff and, and easier issues for teachers to take care of. But when you're talking about the trauma that our kids go through every single day, we can't handle it. It's too much for us. We need people in the building that can help us. We can share them with other buildings if you want, but we need a plan to help our kids get back on track and stop with the community stuff. 
if we need to blend grades before they get to the high school from different schools and a middle school maybe, or at an elementary school where they're combining the neighborhoods. Let's think of something that is different than the way we've always, always, always done it because that's not working anymore. There's too much community stuff bleeding in. Um, that, that's just please more social emotional stuff. The security guards are great for, you know, after the fact and after all the trouble's already brought into the building. Maybe there's a way to stop the trouble from coming in. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Sean Tom Thomas. And is there anybody else? Our card's got a little mixed up. Anybody else that has a card that hasn't been called? This is the last one I have. Okay. Sean Thomas, uh, full crawl. <laughs> Squatty, I hear, hear y'all. <laughs> I'm going to be nice. I ain't, I ain't heard nobody tonight. Um, <laughs> I just, yeah, I'm tired. I hate that I got to be here tonight, you know. Um, I got Excuse a lot me, going Thomas. on, but I love my people, so I'm going to be here no matter how tired I am. Mr. Thomas. Sick and tired. Yes, ma'am. Um, do we have your, your information? Yeah, I believe Okay. We need your, we don't have your phone number or your email to oh, contact you. Oh, 267-258-3172. Y'all all could call it if you ever need me. Anybody in the room could call it. I'll be there. Could, I got okay. you. Could you just, um, when you're finished your comment, can you write it down, please? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just want to say that all to um, everybody who filled out a card. Um, for, for many of you, we do not have your contact information, I right? So we can't contact you and follow up without yeah, that. Absolutely. But so don't ask me about my money because I ain't telling y'all nothing about my money. No, but please put your contact information you. if you would like to be contacted on your card. I got Thank you. you. Um, I heard a lot tonight, um, you know, us going at each other back and forth, but nobody really, you know, spoke of anything on how can we actually help the children. Um, studies have shown that 97% of all prison inmates, in particular the violent ones, can't read past the third grade level. So we talking about security, these kids can't read. Security guards don't teach. Last time I checked, they don't teach anything. And actually, security guards don't even get involved in fights and violence. They tend to stay back because they don't want to get cut. So that's not going to save your child if that's what somebody want to do. Okay, I can't beat you up in the school. I'll beat you up outside. Who cares about four security guards? I heard you say you got $319,000 for two extra principals. I could think of a thousand better things you could do with a quarter million dollars. We don't need no more people. We need programs for these kids to learn and feel valuable. You understand? I don't want to sound like a broken record, but it's about value. If I don't feel valuable, then who cares? What the fuck? I don't care about myself. I come here every day. I don't learn anything. I can learn more on YouTube. These kids learn more on YouTube than they learn from anybody in the room. Would you want me to sit here and learn from you, Miss Teacher or Mr. Teacher, in an hour and a half? I can go on YouTube and get the answer in three point seconds flat. Flat. What am I here for? Y'all not keeping up with the times. The kids are. Y'all behind. So since y'all not listening to them, you know what? Let's just, let's just fight and see if they get it then. The chains don't need to be security and all this other crazy. That's, that's prison. They got a lot of guards in there, dude, that stop somebody from getting stabbed or fights or getting killed because nobody cares about that because they don't care about consequence and none of that. But there's some stages before violence, punishment, shame, Anger, then we get violent. Punishment brings the shame. The shame brings the anger. The anger brings the violence. This is how I go. Whether you like it or not or believe it or not, that's how I get down. But we ain't talked about how we're going to put this money to help these kids. I know what helped me in high school. When I got there, I was horrible in middle school. They would call the high school and say, yeah, Sean, come on, and his friends, look out for them. When we got there, I got in a law program. That helped me keep cool because I wanted to be a lawyer. And they had the program there for me. My buddy wanted to be a mechanic. They had the automotive program for him to help him keep cool. These kids come, okay, get the security, do all you want to do, but the day stays the same. The day stays the same. You didn't change anything. It's an economical issue. It's not a security issue. It's economics. And y'all take everything away from the children, all of the programs, all of the money away from the children, and that hurts them. And they get tired of the same old day. It'll make you want to fight, too. But you're not going to fight because you're getting paid to be there. They ain't getting paid to be there. 
what programs are you bringing in? I keep telling you, I'm here to help y'all. I'm here. You're not using me. And you get it for free. I ain't even charge you. But since I know y'all got the money, I will now. I want mine. <laughs> I will now. Because you're not listening. I talked to Mr. Voigt. We've been talking for about a month now. I already told y'all last time I vote. I mean, uh, last time I was here, I got a great idea. This guy needs to come in before the fight. That probably could have stopped it. Y'all don't have real people talking to these people that have really been in those positions. Anybody here younger than 40? 40, a couple of people, a couple of people. All right, so you know, I'm Generation X. I'm that generation they really counted out because my pants were sagging and all of this. And uh, Last time I checked, the bankers wear nice suits and they rob y'all every day, but y'all ain't worried about them because he dressed nice. Well, my pants got to do with how I'm going to act. Put something up here for me. Like the lady said, the food is garbage. That can't help me learn on that diet, that food trash. The music I listen to is trash, drilling and killing. And I come to school to exercise what I heard them rappers put in my head. But I probably was listening to that at the house, but ain't nobody stopped me at the house. So I get to school and act out what little baby and them told me to do to my neighbor, which I ain't mad at. And when you get to go home every night and ain't no 20 kids jumped on your behind, thank God, because they mad at you but they beating themselves up, but the same dog bit you, bit me, dog, while we fighting. We mad at them. So they ain't gave us no education. They ain't did nothing about this cruel world when they was out partying and having a good time and doing their thing, but now everybody, you ain't did nothing to help these kids, man. But we always want to talk trash about them. They just got the earth. It was already messed up. And just so happened that anything that's predominantly black is always going to be effed up, bad, horrible. Y'all catch a cold, we catch pneumonia. But I ain't trying to put nobody down. No, I'm just telling you like it is. I deal with things like they are, not how they should be. That's the only way we can fix the problem. But you got a patient in here that's critically ill, and we talking about stuff that ain't, they ain't gonna help this patient. We wasting time again, again, and we just, y'all love to waste time. I don't care how long it take, a week, two years, 10 years, 20 years. As long as whatever in that time span, we don't waste time, I'm good. Let's not waste time, baby. These kids' lives is at stake. It's violent because it's poverty. It's economics. What am I conserving? I can't be conserving. Well, I'm conserving welfare, uh, Section 8. What I'm conserving? My mama can't pass that job down to me. You want to keep telling me about multicultural and all this nonsense? Go outside see me where you see a multiculturally owned gas station or market, or any type of business. It ain't multicultural, and you think these kids don't see that? Stop lying to them, and they know you're lying to Because you are a liar. You keep telling them about this fantasy world that don't exist. Give it to me real, then I can deal with it. You, don't, you ain't going to need all this money if you just had the right solution, I promise you. You can save a lot of money, save a lot of heartache, save a lot of time if you do the necessary things and y'all listen to some people like me. You ain't got to listen. Before you had that first ride with them hoodies, I told you, don't do it. What happened? You did it, and then what happened? <laughs> OK? Before this last fight, I told you, don't do it. You didn't do it. I, I got somebody that can come in and help y'all. Uh, forget him. Uh, the fight stuff. You got to listen to somebody. I ain't got no degree, but I'm telling you, I got the answers. I got the answers. I am them. I'm them kids that y'all just trying to keep punishing all the time. I don't know what's going on at the house. They probably ain't eating good and getting no good. It's, it's it, all around for these kids. It's just craziness everywhere from the house to the school and in between the walk, everything. Because I'm telling you, they all good friends. They only fighting each other because they're just afraid to fight y'all. But I'm telling you, it's really, thank, when you get home, drop to your knees and thank God that you made it home today. That you wasn't the one that the 20 people jumped on because they really want to do it to you. They really want to do it to you. And I'm trying to help you and tell you before they do it to you or before a body does actually drop on the campus. You got to help them with programs, man. There's a reason it's not happening at Radnor or Lower Marion or Springfield. Economics, they got the bread, baby. They got the programs. In jail, they don't fight just because they want to fight. Oppress, depress, suppress. They ain't got no outlet. They ain't got no outlet.
Same thing here at school. This is about to be, like I said before, Academy Park Correctional Facility. Everything I heard tonight sounds like correctional facility attitude. This, this ain't a superintendent, this a warden. In disguise as a superintendent, in disguise as a principal. That's a correctional officer, that ain't security. I say stop lying to yourselves, stop lying to the children, be real with yourself, be real with the children, then we can fix the thing. We can't fix the thing if you keep acting like it ain't there and it ain't happening and security going, if you scared, go to bed then. I ain't scared. I don't need no security. I got God with me. I'm good. They children. Well, I need security. They kids. Y'all scared of these kids. They, them kids came out y'all belly and you scared of them. The kids, they, tomorrow they're going to have the same regular old nothing day. And next week, they already know. Surprise them. We got a new program in here. Oh, hey. It's, you got kids that want to be nurses. Where the nursing program? Like I said, kids that want to be in the automotive, want to work on cars and be engineers. Where's that program? And they, they all can't go there, though. It should be in this school. It should be here. It should be in every school. It shouldn't be a line and I got to get a, a lottery pick and all that to be, <laughs> to be educated. That's your time, Mr. Thomas. Mr. Go. Thomas, thank you. I'm sorry. I know no, I, I went over my say, time. Um, I didn't mean to do that. I'm please sorry. Please put something in writing and send it uh, to us if you're interested in presenting a program. Yes. Thank you. Um, any more, any more public comments? Um, I, I do want to say to the community, if you are interested in um, proposing or uh, putting a proposal together for the district regarding a program, um, please send it to us. We're more than happy to look at it. Thank you. I okay. I, w I wanted to say, just to, um, to follow up with Mr. Thomas, um, please submit something in writing. We haven't received anything in writing um, regarding a proposed program for the school district. If um, you are interested in presenting a program to the district that would support our students, we're more than happy, more than open to review that. Please submit something in writing. All our information is on the uh, district website, and you could email us uh, your proposal. Thank you. Madam President, I have something oh, to say. Did you have, oh, yeah, go yeah. ahead. So I would like to thank everybody for coming out, and I hope that you come out on Thursday. Um, Miss, I'm going to say your name wrong. Miss Jenkins, mm -hmm. thank you for the comment. Um, I am one, I can only speak for myself, I go into the buildings, and <clears throat> I've seen what you spoke about. I also have a child here as well. Um, I do encourage the school board members to go and see for themselves so they can see firsthand what goes on. Um, I went over to the building after the Wednesday incident. Um, I was sitting there talking. Um, I encountered a young lady, she was crying, and all she wanted was, I hear a tie. So I said, I'll be right back. I'm going to go to my car and do some air ties. So um, some board members do go out to the buildings. I'm not saying all. I'm saying some. And I can only speak to, for myself. Um, so I thank you guys for expressing yourself, and I hope that you continue to come to meetings and continue to express yourself, and then maybe... I also wanted to say something myself. Um, I'm going to speak for me. Um, I, your kids, I always say your kids are my kids. And I do walk through those schools. And I do see what you see. And I do bring it to the board, but I can't do it all by myself. Okay? So if you want to know, or if you, you have to come to the board meeting to see who is who. Okay, 
because I can't do it by myself. When there is a fight, yes, I always say we need a meeting. Right now, right now. Not tomorrow, not next week. We need it now. Because I also raised an African-American uh, uh, young boy who wanted to be out in the street, okay? But he's a successful young man today. And I want your kids to be successful. So I want you to know that there is somebody that cares for your children. All of us are not alike. I walk through those schools. I talk to the teachers. I talk to the students. I talk to the principals to find out what is it they need, and I bring it to the board. But I can't do it by myself. So you're going to have to help me to get this thing together because I can't do it by myself. I fear for your kids. I fear for the staff. I don't want nobody to come into our school and shoot it up. Because that would hurt my heart. I care for these kids. I'm not in this seat. I don't get paid for this. And I don't miss no meetings. These kids need to be educated, okay? Because guess what? We're all black. Most of us are. And when they get out in the world, they need education. They need guidance. They need directions. And I'm doing all that I can. So don't think that we don't care. And I'm only speaking for myself. I'm not saying the whole board don't care. I'm speaking for me. I do care. So if you need my information, my card, my phone number, you can call me anytime because that's your child. You are concerned about your children, and you should be. Because if my child was here, if I had a kid that was old enough to go to high school, you best believe I'd be standing at that mic saying the same thing you're saying. So if you need anything, you could come to me. I could give you my card, and you can call me at any time. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to say a few of the um, concerns that have been presented tonight are on the agenda that we plan to address on Thursday. And we want to thank everybody for um, your concerns. And um, you haven't, so, there are some things that um, have been shared regarding a plan. There are additional plans coming on Thursday. So we want to encourage everyone to come out to hear them and to participate in them. Also, the Parent Student Advisory Committee, um, I believe somebody mentioned or requested, is there a committee that they can get involved in? There is the Parent Student Advisory Committee, and we are, you're more than welcome to participate in that. Um, Ms. Perry leads that committee, and she will be following up with you all. Please make sure we have um, your information if you um, would like to be involved so that we can contact you. Um, announcements for future meetings. Um, the next uh, board meeting, again, is coming this Thursday, December 15th at 7 p.m., and the Committee of the Whole is Thursday, January 19th, uh, 2023. Can I have a motion so moved. to adjourn the meeting? Second. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.